Okay, focus on your breath. And as for thoughts that go in any other direction, just put them aside. This is a game where there are no losers. Each time you can put aside a thought, you win. And the thought doesn't lose, it just goes away. There's no person there that's losing. So just keep coming back to the breath. See how long you can maintain this intention. And make the breath comfortable. There's no need to sit here with an uncomfortable breath. No one's forcing you to breathe in an uncomfortable way. So explore to see what kind of breathing feels good. It might be longer or shorter, deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. You've got room to experiment. Because that's how you learn. You learn by experimenting. You can't just sit and watch passively and hope to le learn anything at all. Because if you're just passive, you don't know what's causing what. Two things happen ex in succession, you don't know. Are they connected or are they not connected? The only way to, fi only way to find out is to change one of them. and see if the other one changes as well. So you take an active role in getting the mind to settle down, providing a good place to stay, and then looking after it to make sure it stays here, no matter what thought comes up. You may have heard that sitting in concentration doesn't get you anywhere and you've got to do insight practice. And you start getting impatient to go on to the insight. Well, that impatience right now is a disturbance. So you have to let that go, too. There's a lot to learn simply in getting the mind to settle down. Don't think you can do pure concentration practice without getting any insight. The two of them, the qualities have to go together. You need insight into the mind in order to get it to settle down. And once it's settled down, Every time you overcome a desire to move off someplace else, you gain insight. And the mind will come up with all kinds of reasons. Say, so you've got to think about this, got to think about that, and what are you doing? You're sitting, just being very still. Where is your insight? Learn to see through all those different arguments. And as you learn how to sidestep the arguments, that's how you gain insight. As I said, this is a game in which there are no losers. It's a positive-sum game. Most of us in life live in a world where we think every game is a zero-sum game. Sum game. If somebody else gains something, we lose. If we gain, they lose. And so it's a constant back and forth. If someone else gets the advantage, we've got to take it away from them somehow. And what turns out, it's not a zero-sum game. It's a negative-sum game. Both sides lose in those games. Because both sides end up doing things and saying things and thinking things that are really harmful. And then what happens? You both die. And what do you have left? All the habits that you build in your mind. And you've been building bad habits. Well, it's, you've lost. The other person's lost. No matter, as they say, if you, even if you win, win the rat race, you're still a rat. So it's important that you don't play those games. The important games are the ones where you come out ahead, the other person comes out ahead. And that means you focus mainly on this game inside. What's in charge inside your mind? In the world outside, some people gain power, other people lose power. But that kind of power usually doesn't mean anything in the long term. Look at all the powerful people in the past. Where are they now? 
what do they gain from their use of power? The only thing that they've really gained is if they learn to use their power for the good. But most people don't do that. But if you look inside the mind, here's something where you can gain power, gain control over the mind. For the purpose of concentration, for the purpose of discernment, for the purpose of release. That's a game when there are no losers. It's a positive sum game. So focus on what you can control. Learn how to get some control over your mind, where it's going, what it's going to focus on. You do have the choice. Even as you're sitting here right now, there's all kinds of sensory input coming in. We've tried to minimize it, but still there's the the feelings in your body. There's the warmth of the air. There's the sound of the crickets. There's the far-off sound of the water pump. Occasionally there's an airplane coming through. There's the sounds of the other people in the room. You could focus on those and work up all kinds of narratives, all kinds of scenarios. But why? Why do you get out of it? You've got the choice. You can focus on your breath or you can do all kinds of other things. So learn to focus on the breath and then stick with that intention. Each time you've overcome the impulse to go someplace else, there's a small victory in the mind. And as I said earlier, the, the mind will come up with all kinds of reasons why you should move someplace else. And as you learn to see through those reasons, that's another victory. You gain some insight into how the mind pushes itself around, how it lets itself be pushed around. And each time you've learned to see through those subterfuges, you've gained a victory. And the more you gain control over the mind, then the more you're in control of other situations as well. In other words, you control the situation to the extent that you don't let yourself get pulled into your old habits. The old negative sum habits. If you got the strength inside, you realize that those external victories really don't mean anything. It's the internal victories that mean something because you carry them with you. Even as you age, grow ill, and die, you carry them with you as well. And they can really help you then. It's for everyone, even the most powerful, wealthy people will reach a point in life where their power and wealth will mean nothing at all, and all they have left is the habits that they developed as they exercise their power, as they use their wealth. And often, often those habits aren't helpful at all. But if you learn to gain some control over your mind so that it doesn't go into areas that cause suffering, that doesn't go into areas that cause stress, doesn't go into areas that give rise to greed, anger, and delusion, impatience, fear, whatever, when you've gained the concentration, the mindfulness, and the discernment to see through these things, okay, those are really good habits. No matter where you go, no matter what your situation in life, they're going to be useful. So that's what we're working on here right now, the mindfulness to keep reminding yourself to stay with the breath, the concentration that really does stick with it, the discernment that allows you to see what kind of breathing makes it easier to stay with the breath, what kind of breathing makes it harder, what kind of breathing gives you a sense of ease and fullness right here in the present moment. That's the beginning of discernment. It looks small, it seems minor, but it's not. It helps you see cause and effect. And 
didn't particularly cause the causes in the mind that lead to a sense of ease, the causes in the mind that lead to stress. That's the beginning of the Four Noble Truths right there. So this is a positive sum game. And if you learn to live life playing this game rather than getting involved in other games, everybody comes out ahead. <laughs>